Hey you guys, Sean T. Phillips here with my March 18th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I received review and talk about for you guys over the last month or so. It's been a little while since I've done a standalone update video, but I've got a bunch of really cool stuff to let you guys know about here. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these update videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below this video, you know, letting me know about the titles that I checked out and review, you know, what you guys thought about them. Any titles coming up that you guys would like me to review for future updates, and some of the DVDs and Blu-rays which you guys have picked up recently. Now, first ones here I got all from Fox, and the first one here is three Three billboards outside in Ebbing, Missouri. This movie had a whole bunch of Academy Award nominations. Uh, Frances McDormand won for Best Actress. Sam Rockwell won for Best Supporting Actor in this movie. And also was up for Best Picture nomination as well. But the movie is a really, really well-made character piece movie. It's basically about Fran Francis McDormand's character whose daughter, you know, was killed in this terrible thing that happened to her daughter. And, um, you know the case has never been was never solved, and you know she, she basically was like really like desperate to figure out who it was that killed the daughter, and how, you know because like I said it was a really terrible thing that had happened, and, and the way that it happened, and the police were really not doing a good job solving this. So she's become really like really upset about the whole thing. So she ends up renting out these billboards right by her house. It's basically calling out the police, and especially calling out uh, Woody Harrelson's character, and you know for not solving this and it's and it, you know, it becomes like a whole big thing in the town and they're all like well, you know you can't have these things up and it's sort of embarrassing the whole police force but she's doing this in hopes that they're going to finally get it together and you know try and you know figure out who did this to the daughter and I don't know it was a really 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 well made movie well acted movie you can see why Francis McDormand won for this movie same with Sam Rockwell but Woody Harrelson was really great in the movie as well but I really like this one uh, Brendan Sexton the third, you know, who was in um, Welcome to Dollhouse and Hurricane Streets and the John Waters movie Pecker, he's in this movie as well. has a has a small part in this movie, so it's cool to see him in the new movie as well. I've always been a fan of him. This has on here though deleted scenes as well as a uh, making of on this one as well as a still gallery. But highly recommend if you guys have not seen this one. Really, really like this one a lot. This one here, um, you know, some Fox as well. And this movie had some mixed reviews. I saw this in theaters as well. And I thought this was actually a fun movie. I have not seen, and you know, there was a num lots of different, you know, renditions of this story. It's an Ag Agatha Christie story. So they had done a, like a whole lot of, you know, different, you know, versions of this throughout the years, you know, in like the 70s. And like the, there's been like TV versions and all kinds of different ones. But this one is the brand new, you know, edition, a new version of Murder on the Orient Express. And I honestly like this movie, especially because what really made this movie was the cast. You know, it has really great cast. It's William Defoe's in this movie, uh, Daisy Ridley. You know, from the Star Wars, the new Star Wars films. Uh, you know, uh, Josh Gad, Johnny Depp, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Penelope Cruz. The director actually stars in this movie as well as like the inspector, and he actually did a really good job in this movie. And it's pretty much though. If you guys don't know the story, it's like the inspector who's like this world-renowned inspector who can solve all the cases. He goes and has to take this train to get to his destination. But when he's on there, someone's found dead on the train. And it's sort of him on there making his, his mission to solve the case and figure out who was involved, you know, who was the killer on the train. So it's kind of like Clue, you know, like the movie Clue, which was kind of like a spoof sort of of like the Agatha, Agatha Christie stories. And... um so sort of him on there going around interviewing the people. It's a slow burn kind of movie, but I honestly, I really did get into this movie. Like I, I, and I, I don't see why the negativity was with it. But like I said, I never saw the other versions of this story, so maybe they were done a little different. But I honestly like this, and this is you know, like I said, this is the 4K edition here. Picture wise, though, looks really, really great, really amazing picture. Like I always say with 4K, if you guys have the capacity, it definitely is you know an upgrade. Oh, I mean, it always is you know a detail upgrade and the big thing too is like the contrast and brightness levels those are always boosted up so much with it but it has on here though um some featurettes on here a deleted scenes a commentary track on here with the director and some other features as well but really really fun movie you know and it's like it, it's like i said it's got a serious vibe as well but then like some quirky kind of comedious comedy stuff in it this movie is another one I'm sort of surprised it didn't have any nominations because I really like this and it's you know the movie um, Battle of the Sexes. This is starring Emma Stone and Steve Carell and this is you know Emma Stone's character is um, I'm trying to figure out what her her name was Billie Jean King who she's playing who is a you know female tennis star and it was. Um, pretty much about the whole battle between her and Bob, I believe it was Bobby Riggs, 
unless I'm mixing that up, his name, Bobby, I think it was, yeah, Bobby Riggs, play, who Steve Carell plays, who was a tennis star as well, a male tennis star, and he always was kind of like, they had this whole thing between them when he was giving her all kinds of grief, going, oh, women can't play tennis, and, you know, he kind of challenges her out because she's, like, really doing well in the tennis world to a battle of, like, a, between them, and it becomes this whole, like, you know, this is all based on the true thing about, like, this kind of, like, serrade between him and Steve Carell's character was taking it really like you know you know not being very serious at all and being really over the top and goofy about the whole thing and trying to kind of do it to kind of make money and be like a whole spectacle and it was kind of like the whole battle between both of them I, I thought this was actually a really fun movie I really really got into this movie and it's also about the time too you know when Billie Jean's character you know is lesbian and you know what she was at the time and she had to kind of cover that up and it was like a whole because it was a very different time so it was like kind of like her dealing with that too in her life and trying to keep that private because she doesn't want to have that come out to the media. I don't know. I really like this movie a lot. Like I said, performance-wise, though, everybody was really good in this movie. It has on here, though, uh, raw footage of Billie Jean's uh, entrance as well as uh, Billie Jean King in her own words as well as a gallery on this as well. These ones I finished watching right now. Uh, this movie is, stars Edris Elba and Kate Winslet. This is from Fox as well. And this is The Mountain Between Us. And this was basically about, um, you know, Kate uh, Winslet's character who's getting ready to go to, a, to her own wedding and Edris Elba who's going to this medical conference convention. And, you know, the, the plane that they're both going to be going on gets delayed and canceled, you know, because of this snowstorm. So both of them work together and they say, okay, well, well we both have to get to the same area. Maybe if we put together our money we can charter a plane so they end up going to Bo Bridges character and charter this plane and he doesn't you know he sort of doesn't seem like he's totally knows what's going on the guy Bo Bridges character so they go up there on the plane and he ends up having a heart attack up there you know why they're midair and then the plane like crashes under the mountain and falls all apart and like it's kind of them trapped on this mountain with no way to contact anyone they don't have any cell service or anything and it's sort of them out there trying to survive and they're there with Bo Bridges dog that survives eyes and it's sort of them out there sort of trying to figure out what they're going to do and figure out if they should leave the plane or if they should try and walk and it's like they both got kind of injured a little bit while they were out there so it's kind of like a whole survival story about them trying to figure out how to get in contact with somebody or figure out where you know how they're going to survive out there but a pretty interesting character piece and it has like some other stuff that goes on in this as well with their characters this has on here though some featurettes on here it has the things on here about the stunt uh, uh, the stunts of the movie uh, deleted scenes and then a director commentary on this one this one is a 4k release as well and this one really looks good in 4k because the whole movie is set out in the snow so it's like real like you know mountainy uh, landscapes and everything so it's really like a bright snow too so it really does you know boost the color of that to the whole look of everything but this was like wasn't a perfect movie or anything but it was a pretty good survival story and um this one is from fox as well and this is um uh, goodbye christopher robin this is based on the true story about the uh the arthur who created you know Winnie the Pooh, the Winnie the Pooh book series, and kind of how it all came to be. And uh, Margot Robbie stars in this one as well. And it's pretty much... Um and the main actor who's been in, like, Star Wars recently, the new Star Wars films, and, you know, um, Do Domin Gleeson, I believe that's how you say I might be saying it wrong, but he's also in Peter Rabbit recently. I always like him, He's all, and he was also in one called About Time. Um... This is sort of a. It starts off in the very beginning when their their characters are older, and you see they get this like telegram that something has gone wrong. They read it, and it kind of you know something's bad, and it flashes back to him when they were you know f met. I think 15 years earlier, right when Margot Robbie's character is pregnant, and it's sort of about um, the one guy, his character you know, her husband, you know, recently got back from war and she was like worried about him back there. And, and, you know, he can't, right when they have the baby too, he can't deal with like being in the city anymore. And he's having flashbacks to the war and he needs to kind of escape and do something different. It's sort of about him and his ki new kid out there living out there, you know, when he's getting a little older and kind of how the whole Winnie the Pooh stories gets created with his like stuffed animals and kind of the whole thing and how it like the fame that it comes with it. And that's pretty much what the whole thing is, is a biopic on the whole story about how Winnie the Pooh was created, but a really well done character piece here. It has on here though a commentary track with um, the director on here, a bunch of featurettes on here, a uh, Christopher Robinson uh, featurette, a thing on here on the cast and this movie. But I actually really like this one. This, like I said, this is one I did not get to see in theaters. This one I just want you guys to know is available 
from Fox as well. And this is the Showtime series, Homeland, the complete sixth season here. This has on here, though, um, feature you know, feature-wise, it has uh, on location New York City, a thing on here about season six, the uh, Pally Center, um, media Q&A with the creative team talking about the show. And that's a pretty cool, the Pally Center, um, you know, they have like certain events where they have the, kind of like the Comic-Con events, and they kind of get together, a cast of certain shows, and like talk about the making of and stuff. So it's basically almost like a panel at Comic-Con con but they have some footage from that uh panel on this uh blu-ray release and the next one here i got from uh, bbc and we'll let you guys know this one is available and this is a really fun show it's uh stars uh simon barnett and um elijah wood and this show is uh dirk gently's holistic detective agency this is the complete second season of the show and yeah, i watched a couple episodes of this season like i really love the first season as well it's a really fun it's a little bit hard to explain but it's kind of like dirk gently's character is kind of like in charge of like you know keeping the world's sort of safe from like weird like uh characters and bad people and stuff that come from like other dimensions and other like all kinds of like planes of existence and all these kind of really weird quirky over the top crazy kind of characters and he has to kind of save the day from them and he works with elijah wood's character and they kind of get into all kinds of goofy like crazy encounters and all kinds of weird people they're trying to stop and stuff and um I don't know, it's a very, very fun, quirky show. Uh, it's, it was created by Max Landis, who, you know, wrote a bunch of different movies. You know, it's John Landis' son, but he's written some really fun films and stuff like that. But he's actually the creator of this show. This has on here, though, a season one round cap, roundup recap, as well as uh, 10 inside looks. But this is a really, really fun show. If you guys are, you know, haven't seen this one, definitely check this one out. Next one here is from um, MVD, and Mick Foley has a part in this movie. It's a movie here called uh, Choke Slam. This movie is kind of making me think a little bit like, um, you know, like some of the wrestling movies like Ready to Rumble and some of those type of films. And like I said, it's called Choke Slam. It's about this kid who, you know, um, you know, when he graduated, was graduating from high school, like he had this one girl that he really liked, and he told her on stage that he did, and you know they were kind of friends, and that's all it really was. But it kind of went really badly, and this is years later. They're getting ready to go to the high school reunion, and he finds out that she's going, and this girl now is a huge wrestling star who's like really popular and has all these fans, but she's coming back to the reunion, and he gets like encouraged to go and like you know try tell her how he feels and you know, sort of see her again, and it's kind of like he meets her. Again again but she's like in a really weird place in her life because she's kind of having problems with wrestling and having you know uh sort of issues and arguments with her manager and the whole everything like getting in trouble with like the police and stuff she's having lots of problems and she really wants to kind of get out of the whole thing and he finds out about this and really wants to help her have a retirement and like a big last match in the small town that they're in you know he's doing that too to try and like win her over again it's sort of like if you know him trying to make this event work in hopes of trying to win her over and it's kind of like that's the whole thing going on and uh, Mick Foley plays the guy who like runs the wrestling kind of building that they're going to use to have the um, you know event but a really pretty fun movie here you know has a feature on here as well as a theatrical trailer this one here this is one I was really interested in seeing and this is from a company called Now Wow um, no is it, is it you know Wow Now Entertainment. And this movie I was really interested in seeing. This is the last movie that Florence Henderson made before she passed away. You know, acted in it. It's a movie here called Bad Grandmas. And it's Florence Henderson is in this movie, as well as Pam Greer and Judge Reinhold. It's pretty much, though, about, uh, the, you know, uh, Florence Henderson's friend's character comes to her and says that she's getting ready to lose her house because, like, the bank is going to take it away because, like, somebody died and, um, like, it was supposed to be left to her, but, like, the, the, the one son-in-law is trying to take it away from the bank. So it's, it becomes a huge thing, and Florence Henderson goes to, you know, wants to help her and, you know, goes to the bank where the guy is and, like, hoes him at gunpoint and says, you're going to tear up this paper and she's not going to lose her house. Of course, though, it doesn't go well and she ends up accidentally shooting him and the guy ends up dying and then it becomes this whole thing about these older ladies are trying to figure out how they're gonna hide this body and then how try to keep it quiet but then like people start coming around asking questions and then Judge Reinhold's character is there and he's like trying to find the guy that was killed as well you know because he's trying to get money from him and it becomes this huge to do and a terrible situation and they're sort of trying to figure out you know what they're gonna do but this is actually a really fun movie and Florence Henderson plays kind of a over-the-top kind of um 
you know, mean streak grandmother in this movie. I know it was, she was really funny in this movie. I can, I, and I, she didn't really get to do that too often. She did in the Brady Bunch movie. She played kind of a, kind of a weird character like that as well, like an over the top version of herself in that in the Brady Bunch film. But I don't know. I always been a fan of Clarence Henderson. You know, best known for the Brady Bunch. But really cool to see this movie and a really fun movie. The next ones here are from High Octane Pictures. And this is one I was really interested in seeing. I really wanted to see this movie. And I really got into this movie. It's a goofy, and the only other word for this movie is sort of bonkers. You know, it's, it's really, really strange. But it's a movie here called Cannibal Farm. And it's basically, though, about, like, this uh, family that's going on a trip out to, like, this sort of farm kind of land area out in the middle of, like, Yorkshire. And they're going to, like... um put up they have like a driving out in the rv they're going to like put a tent up like the guy wants to sleep out there with his wife his new new wife or newer wife and they go out there but of course though the place that they go is like this land where like years back this kid was burned and like deformed from being burned and he ends up like you know haunting the land and like attacking people so of course though they get out there on this land and then they're getting like attacked by this so sort of leather face kind of guy and they're all putting into like these cages and there's really weird stuff going on and they're trying to escape and the father who like is on the land is like insane he's got this like long white hair and he's like totally crazy and he's like saying all these crazy lines the movie does do some weird stuff where it has like like some of these flashbacks like one or two times like this one I'm like well I don't know if they totally needed all that like they could have probably trimmed like 20 minutes off of that this movie with that kind of stuff because it was a little odd but this movie to me it kind of like lives on in a weird way as like a classic slasher because it really feels like sort of like a lost like 1986 movie or something it has this like real old school feel to this that I really liked and it's not really like just like the Texas Chainsaw kind of movie. It's not that kind of vibe. It's got that feel to it, but then it's got all this other stuff going on. I don't know. I really, like I said, I got into this movie. This is just a fun, ridiculous time. There's like some really over-the-top kind of stuff in this movie as well. And the next one here is from High Octane Pictures as well. It's a movie here called Curse of the Witch's Doll. And this is a movie like kind of like a creepy, possessed doll, kind of Annabelle-style movie. Got that kind of vibe to the movie. It's essentially, though, about like... um. It's one thing that happens, like, these this family's escaping from the war, and they go to this house, and something ends up happening to the daughter, and it's kind of like, is, is the daughter, like, possessed this doll, and it's kind of, and it kind of cuts to, like, different times and eras in this house with other people that are kind of having creepy things that are happening to them that are all kind of involving this doll and they do some really creepy stuff too of like the doll like looking and like this it's a actually a very very creepy doll that they have in that and that definitely makes the movie is the creepiness of this doll and it deals with some paranormal kind of stuff as well like I said it goes to different kind of eras in this house all dealing with things that are weird going on through different people that are coming into the house it's kind of an interesting one here this one is called Carnival Carnivore, uh, Werewolf of London. This is about a couple that are going out to stay in this kind of cabin out in the middle of the woods. And they're out there kind of, and they're having like some relationship kind of problems going on. This one is from High Octane Pictures as well, but they're having some relationship issues. They're trying to kind of work things out out there. But it's like when they're out there though, you kind of see like something out in the woods just kind of watching them and lurking around and stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, what is going on? They're kind of looking outside, hearing weird things. But, you know, you know from the cover that it's a werewolf thing. So as you see in the very beginning of the movie too, someone is attacked by some kind of a beast thing. But it's kind of a crazy werewolf. And it's got some kind of like over-the-top comedic stuff as well in this movie. Um, it was kind of a fun like couple out there sort of trying to survive from this. And it's kind of like, you know, like I said, it's like a self-aware kind of movie, too, a little bit, because it goes a little over the top of some of this stuff. Uh, and this has on here, though, behind-the-scenes bloopers and extended scenes. But out of all the high-octane ones, though, my favorite one is Cannibal Farm. That was just, to me, like, really love that. Uh, this one here is from SRS Cinema. This is a movie, a documentary here called Penny Pinchers, The Kings of No-Budget Horror. And uh, Dustin Ferguson directed this movie. And this is basically, uh, it was kind of cool, though, a couple people in here that I worked with in the past, like um, uh, Donald Farmer... You know, I did a thing for one of his movies. Uh, Tim Ritter, I did a thing for Deadly Dares, Truth or Dare 4. Uh, you know, Lloyd Coffin's on here. Uh, Chris Seaver, who I did, you know, the movie Geek War with. And they even play, like, a little clip, like, of the trailer of Geek War. So you see me in this, you know, this, some of the clips of me in there when they play the trailer. But this is all about, the, you know, independent, you know, micro-budget directors. It's a documentary kind of talking to them about, like, how they started, you know, and then kind of, like, how they, you know, kind of grew to build their fan bases and 
the whole kind of thing about like the the good and the bad about making low budget movies and kind of about the you know how you can make money with it and how it can be difficult and kind of how it was in the early days when Pete, some of the directors were doing like shot on video kind of stuff when video stores were more prevalent you know around and the whole different thing it goes through all the different aspects of that but actually a pretty well done documentary and if you guys are fans of like indie micro budget horror movies this is one I would definitely recommend you guys check out this one here is from Wild Eye Releasing. It's a movie here called The Butchering. And this is about like a, a serial killer who killed all these people, and then he, you know, it's, it's basically though about in the beginning. The the movie starts off though with the serial killer gets caught, and there's some people that end up surviving, and like this police officer, you know, ends up you know helping get him caught. But this, you know, it's basically though about you know. Um, it looks like you know this this killer has come back to this town, and the and the police officer is kind of like telling everybody that you know he's come back, and they're all looking at him like no he's not, there's no way that he's back, and it's kind of like he's like no things are looking like that, and he kind of is coming back to go, or is he coming back, or is it somebody else, or is it an imposter, or a copycat, but. You know, the original people that survive are starting to get taken out one by one. It's pretty much, though, about the cop trying to convince them that, you know, this is this is happening. We need to try and stop who this is and try and figure out exactly if it's the same person come back somehow or if this is somebody else or what it is. It's like it's, like it's a, kind of a sla slasher kind of movie, that kind of one about, like, the person maybe or maybe not returning. But it has on here, though, behind the scenes, alternate ending, uh, deleted scenes, cast and crew interviews, short film, trailers, so a whole bunch of different you know features on this one these ones here are all from um the movie called the company called um indican pictures and this one here is called apartment or uh, you know at part yeah, apt or you know just apartment abbreviated 3d and this is about a couple that goes to stay in like one of their friends um apartments in New York because they're there to write a like a sit the one guy gets a job to work on the sitcom writing for this doing the scripts and stuff for it and the girlfriend's like really not happy to be there she doesn't want to be there but you know she kind of has to go here for the work with the with the boyfriend but when they're there though in the house they're hearing really weird noises and there's some really odd stuff going on the one neighbor is telling them that they shouldn't really be there it's like it's not good and like it's kind of them trying to figure out what is going on and why weird things are starting to happen to them why they're in this house and stuff and like and also is like the boyfriend is sort of thinking you know is this kind of being exaggerated or she you know the girlfriend kind of saying more of this and making a bigger deal about the whole thing to try and get them to you know move out and go back to LA but it's kind of a fun you know haunted house sort of weird things going on type movie uh, this one here is called uh, crazy lake this is about you know uh, a group of you know uh, friends on you know on spring break and it's pretty much them going out to a cabin out in the middle of the woods you know it's like a cabin in the woods type movie and they're they're out there though it's like a slasher you know it's like it's a throwback slasher film about them all out in the middle of the woods you know getting attacked and killed off and stuff by somebody out there in the woods and that's essentially what it is it's just it's like a really you know over the top sort of you know totally like ridiculous kind of silly stuff going on in this movie but that's essentially what it is it's just them out there trying to survive out in the middle of the woods. This one is called 666 PM. The director of this one made another one that I liked. It was all set in like a supermarket or a, a hardware store. I can't remember what the name of it was, but the uh, Indicant Pictures released that one as well. And this one is about them putting, doing a, it's like a lot of the same cast members and it's, um, them doing like a reality show about going to this haunted house or supposed haunted house where they said all these people had been killed and stuff and they talking to the owner and like they're filming it but these people who are doing the paranormal show they're all actors and they're kind of acting it up and playing it up for the camera so it's like really they're they don't really know what they're doing and the one who's like says he's psychic is just an actor and kind of playing it up but of course so when they're out there though weird things are really actually starting to happen to them in this house and they're trying to figure out what is really going on here and if this owner could be like playing it up for or maybe he's playing something out this has on here though um some feature right on here bloopers as well as a producer and director uh commentary on this one and the last one from indican pictures is a movie called big bad and this is about you know um you know, it's basically about this, uh, in this small town, they're trying to raise money for the school by having this, like, overnight thing where, like, the kids are going to spend the night in this jail, and they have to kind of raise money, people give money and stuff to the whole event. And it's, of course, though, when they're there, though, it's, like, dealing with some kind of a creature that's been seen out in the woods and stuff, and they're kind of out there in this abandoned prison getting, like, you know, one by one attacked by this wolf in there, and it's kind of them trying to survive, and it's, like, real crazy film. 
it's done more of a, it's it, I think it was originally like pitched to be like a Goosebumps kind of thing like a Goosebumps type sort of series something like that I was reading that on IMDb and it's got that kind of like more kid sort of feel to this but a kind of a fun crazy like wolf movie and the last one here just one that you guys know this one is available from Time Life and this is the complete uh, third season is now available separately because you know originally it was just in the complete set there it was this one is uh, Ronan Martin's Laughing the complete third season and you know this is the uh, the one character that ringy ringy ding dingy came from that and this is a seven uh dvd set here which includes uh 26 episodes and it's got um you know featuring dan ronan dick martin Goldie Hawn, uh so a bunch of tomlin ruth buzzy so a bunch of different people in here and feature wise as well and it has a bunch of uh you know guest stars like jack benny I mean jack benny sid caesar johnny carson uh debbie reynolds mickey rooney so a bunch of different ones just want you guys know this one is available now from time life you know separately but anyway, though, guys, that's all for this update video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!